And the first step, uh, we're going to cut the membrane as per rough opening. At the very head, I'm going to mark out, feel where my header is, insert my knife, cut across from trimmer to trimmer, go to the bottom. Same there, following the sill, the rough sill, I'll cut across in a straight cut. And now I'm going to do my, what we'd classify as a true eye cut, down the center of the opening to the bottom. The thing that I'm going to do next is going to modify this cut a bit. I'm going to go to the bottom and from that corner I'm going to cut at a diagonal about 45 degrees, about four to six inches. At the top, I'll do the same thing into the corner and at a 45 degree angle, cut about six inches. Next that I'll do is grab this product, the membrane, and roll it back and temporarily tape away from the rough opening. On this side, we'll do the same thing at the bottom, from the corner up, about four to five inches to that corner, and at the head jam, about six inches at a diagonal to the corner. And grabbing this, rolling it, and temporarily taping it outside the opening. Next thing that I'm going to look at here is we have a cut right at the bottom. I would take my tape, uh, sheathing tape, or what, or what I'd call seal tape, and a couple of pieces, tape into my opening to hold that from uh, blowing out. The reason for this is so that it holds it tight and that when you put your sill pan on, it doesn't take it and pillow it out. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the top flap and roll that in. Remember, this is one of the first things cut. This is the last thing that comes down. What I like to do is tuck that up and under like so, and if needed, tape it into place. To prep your rough opening, I've uh, taken a piece of uh, beveled cedar siding. I've increased my rough opening height in order to, uh, to accommodate for this as well. Um, today it's a piece of beveled cedar siding. You see the taper and what it does is give me positive slope to the exterior drainage plane. Um, so far I, uh, I've went ahead and uh, applied my sealant to one bead in the front, one bead in the interior side and then into the corner. I will set that product down into that bed of sealant, flush it up with the outside edge get it put in place, and then fasten it with a fastener. Uh, manufacturer calls out a two inch galvanized roofing nail or equal. I'll put two fasteners in there to hold it into place. Depending on the length, uh, I would do it in intervals of about 15 inches. Next, what we're going to do is make sure we set check it for level. And what I'm going to do with the level is check that. I'm checking the, for levelness, and today we look very well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a piece of flex wrap as a type 3 flexible flash. What I've done here is cut and measured it to be across the rough opening, six inches up on each side. And I've also went out there and folded my front part so I can gauge it along the wall. Next, what I'm going to do is once I've got that apart, I'm going to pull the back layer off in order to apply this. You'll notice that I have three inches from the, that black butyl to the very face. I'm going to leave that on. I'm going to fold it in half, go to my rough opening, and what you want to do is work lightly until you get it fitted. As you can see, contact's a big part of it. Over here, I want to just lightly touch it up, so if I need to move or manipulate, I can still do that. What I'm going to do is use my speed square in the corners to get that corner right in and tight. And I'll grab my roller, 
and roll that product like so. At the corners, I'm looking at how things are laid out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the back of that release, pull it out and forward. What I've done is pull off the release paper. Now I'm going to take and rub that down in the front, push my fingers into the corner and press it out. Fingers into the corner and press it out. A lot of times in the corner right off, right at the beginning, use my speed square to get that pushed out there. Then grab my roller and roll that product down the center. And then with your fingers, mold up against the edge and rub that product down. Again, this is pressure sensitive. You need to apply pressure. Here's a small tip that may help you. When it's cold or even warm out, these corners may pull back and roll. Um, what I do is use a piece of seam seal tape, about four to five inches, and I tape that corner down and rub it into place. All right, next what we do, what we're going to do is in order to keep it in weatherboard fashion, now we're going to pull our outside, what, we've have, what we have rolled up here, and bring this in. Pull it in, and we're going to pack this product into place. Wrap it around into where your king stud trimmer studs are. Staple to your trimmer stud. The next we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and tape our cut right here. We're going to take a six inch piece of tape and we're going to start from the corner and follow that cut up to cut that or to actually seam seal that particular cut so that we have that weatherboard fashion and nothing driving in. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get ready to prep to set the window level. I'm going to use composite shims. Uh, one inch from the corners and then one at the center. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about the use of composite shims and what I'm going to do there. I already have a piece of beveled cedar siding and the shims that I put on there, I'm going to use the sealant to hold them into place so that when I put in my window, I can still have my inside person help um, move them up or down to get them level as we set it from the outside. I'm going to put a small dab of sealant, about one inch. Same over here, and then one at the center. Not a lot, just enough to hold the shims into place. I'm going to take my large end of my tapered shim and set over the top. Do the same on both sides. Go across here like so. Again, not right into the corner, but I want them shims to actually support the jams. Now I'm going to check that unit for level as far as how I have my shims. Go ahead and feel from each one, making sure I have full contact and I have a nice uh, bubble right in the center of my level. The next that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, prep the opening uh, with sealant uh, prior to installation of the window. Um, again, we're only going to seal the sides and the top, not the bottom. 3 8 nominal bead. Up at the top, three quarters of an inch over, half an inch above, a three eighths nominal bead of sealant, making sure to keep your angle pretty straight and apply your bead. What you want to do is make sure that you have a continuous bead going across there. When we put our corner gasket on, that we have the ability to put the corner gasket on and not be affected by adhesion all the way to the bottom. Again, I'm not going to seal, I'm not going to seal anything off at the bottom. Again, at the top, I have a nice continuous bead and looking for any kind of skips. And as of right now, things look pretty good to go. Here, I've kind of gone a little bit into the corner. 
it's acceptable and just to make sure that when you set your corner gasket which would be this product here is that if you have too much there and you don't put them on right away it'll actually cause a buildup and the inability to put your trimmer on the window. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the window. Right now I'm going to grab the window and we're going to set it. I'll have my help on the inside get ready. I'll go ahead based on the size of the unit. This size of the unit I have one individual. Lift it up and we'll pull it into place. What I'm going to do is pull my nailing flange forward and center it in the opening. We in center. Pretty centered on your side? Yep, looks good. And what we're going to do from here, we're going to check it for level. What I'm going to do at the level is, with my help from the inside, I'm going to determine the high side and have them pull on a shim in order to raise uh, the low side. Pull that shim out just a little bit. Thank you. Next, that I have it level. I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple of fasteners. Recommended is a two inch galvanized roofing nail or equal. I'm going to put a fastener in that corner. And I'm going to go to the other corner and put a fastener as well. Next, I'm going to go to the top. Look at how well I'm centered. And I'm going to put a fastener in the top nailing flange. And the purpose for this today is so that when I check my diagonals, I can see what I need to do in order to shift this window. The next what I'm going to do is square the window. Number one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my tape measure and I'm going to check for squareness. So I'm going to lift my top drip edge at the corner, put my tape and go to the bottom, measure, review your measurement. In this case, this particular window is 53 and 11 sixteenths diagonally. Next, I'll do the same thing over here. Lift that top, put it on my frame corner, go all the way down to my opposing corner and measure it. And we're at 53 and 11 sixteenths. A lot of times you'll go out there and you say it's maybe within a 30 second. You can actually tap that over, check your diagonals again. Make sure they're equal, they look the same. And that little bit of a movement that I made there made it square. And again, this is what we're looking for for accuracy, the squareness of the unit. I'm gonna grab my fastener and I'll start. So I'll make sure that it doesn't move while I'm shimming. I'll put a fastener within four inches from the corner at the top. Fasten that down and come over here, do the same thing. This is in order for it to stay into place while you're in the shimming process. Today I have a clearance provision of a half inch. I'm going to use a back rod pushed all the way out to the nailing flange on both jams and at the head jam. Uh, what I'm going to do is start at the lower end of my uh, corner of my unit, apply back rod, push it all the way out to the uh, vinyl nailing flange so that when I set my shims in there, I have something sealing off so I don't have a direct path for my weather or whatnot to come directly into my interior. Um, using a speed square in my back rod, I start at the bottom. I work my way up to the top. And what I want to do is keep it as close to the bottom of the window as I can, get it up to the top, poke it in, kind of pre-measure so I have enough product. And then I'm going to go out there and I'll push that back rod in all the way to the nailing flange. And again, the whole premise to this little exercise is to make sure that when I set my shims and apply my low expansion foam, that the low expansion foam um, has a good continuity with the installation of the window as far as water management. Now, as you've seen, what I did is I went all the way around pushing it in at different increments, not all at once. And again, with a six and a half inch jam here, I'm looking at getting out to that outer edge. There might be areas where it might become a little bit sticky. All I want to make sure is that that particular backer rod is directly out touching that flange. Now that I have that set into place, that's a good start. What the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to use backer rod 
at our clearance provision between our sill and our side jam. In this particular exercise, I like to be up about four to six inches. Push that in, and this would be, this backer rod, rod would be to that of the inboard side called a back dam. And again, going up about four to six inches. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna push it out to that of my original frame or my uh, performance related part of the frame. All right, the next step is to shim. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, with uh, today's shimming, I'm gonna use stackable shims. Right now, I look at a half inch clearance provision. I'm using stackable sh uh, shims. And I'm gonna start by applying my shim at the corner and I notice that it's pretty loose fit. So I'm gonna grab one more shim to put alongside. I want it to friction fit. One of the things I'm looking for is I wanna push that shim out there. I don't wanna force it. And as I'm going, they should just be into place. And you notice that that's four to six inches up from the corner. I like to go to the next corner and I wanna pressure fit them in as well. And with the guide and the use of a air wedge, that can be done quite easily. And again, over here we're shim my upper corner. A little help with an air wedge. Set in place. Next thing I'm going to do is check to see how well my fit is for the shims. Pull out my top stop, go inside a frame. Should be just a small daylight of opening there. Go to my bottom where the shims are, do the same thing, just a very small amount of light. And I'm gonna to go to my center and I'm looking at that I need to bring my centers in a little bit. Again, replacing that top stop in the back, back in the top of the frame. I'm gonna look at my reveals, operate my sash, make sure I have good operation, lockability, bring it back down. Now my shimming process here, I can look to fit my shims proper and right at the check rail. The next thing I like to do is grab some, sh some more shims to the other side. Begin the process of fitting there as well. One of the things I like to do right here at the check rail is use my air wedge Watch my reveal, have them come together, make sure I'm where I want to be. Grab my top parting stop out, put it on the top of that rail to see how much I need to shim. And as of right there, it looks like it's a pretty good finish if I can get it to come together here. Put that right at the center check rail, release my air. Check my distance, looks very good. And I'll put my top stop back in, operate my window. Everything operates really nice and smooth. My reveals look proper, and I think we've done a quite a nice job on shimming. All right, next we're gonna apply foam. We're gonna apply a uh, bead of foam. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start out here this, uh, with this by taking my foam gun, prepping it out, measuring, making sure I can get in there. Uh, the second part of it is I would take it to, say, a box or another uh, container and squeeze out to make sure I have control of how much product comes out. I want a bead of, a bead of low expansion foam right next to the back or rod out in front at the very head and at the jams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my uh, nozzle in there. I'm going to squeeze it off, put a nice bead in there, going at a steady speed, going all the way to the corner. Once I get to the corner, making sure I fill that void, come down to that first shim, pull it out, and then release the trigger, pull it out, and then go around that shim. Go to the mid base of that shim, 
uh, midpoint and then start your bead pushing it all the way out to the back of rod and then following down at a nice continuous speed down to the next shim. As you get to the next shim, pull it towards you, stop pulling the trigger, pull it out, and then put the, put the nozzle back in there about midway and then push forward out to the flange, coming down, following at a nice continuous bead of foam, and then get to your bottom shim, pull it about midway, release your trigger and pull it out. Once you've pulled out there, the next thing that we're going to do is apply a, what we call a butt joint. The back rod that we have in there, we're going to fill this gap here with sealant and then come back and tool it as a back dam. That would be within that four inches from the corner and around and across. We can actually go out there as long as uh, we're doing this and getting this done. Um, we can start to put the wall, rock wall once we're done here or the insulation. I like to fill this void, get it, and then push that around and in that corner, around that corner. Right now we got we have a shim that's in the way a little bit. Again, making sure that we fill that void. And going across the, all the way, getting up against that back rod. Once you're done there, come back out here and tool that sealant around, making sure that you have a good backer dam. What I would do now that your foam has started to set up in your jam space there, I would go out there with the rock wool or insulation and fill in insulation, loosely fit into that gap. Whether you see, see a, a shim or a speed square, packing that in, not packing but loosely fitting. Doing this thing, same thing up above. And again, the loose fit part of it, something you really want to pay attention to. Now that you have your insulation in, and then your back dam at the sides, any incidentals that come into this far to drop down and follow your tapered uh, angle to the exterior drainage plane. All right, a quick summary of what we have just done. Uh, out here, what we have is we have put in a backer rod up to the very nailing flange. And then right behind that back rod would be a bead of low expansion foam. And behind that low expansion foam is going to be a little bit of loose fit insulation for air movement if there are any incidentals. And again, we look at from here at the tops and the sides, that back rod all the way to the forward, a bead of low expansion foam, loose fit. When we get down to about six inches from the bottom corner, we're going to push a back rod in to the very performing part of the window uh, and go across the bottom and back up six inches and then come back and fill that void with sealant called a back dam, which gives us the performance that we need for a good window. Now that we're done with the inside and the interior, now we're going to come back to the outside and finish off the installation. Number one, I'm going to go out there and we're going to talk about fastening on the flange. Uh, what I did is, uh, what we're asking to do is within four inches from the corners and every other hole when you use that of a two inch galvanized roofing nail. If you're going to go out there today and use an inch and three quarter inch roofing nail, you're going to want to go every hole. Today I have a fastener equal to that of a two inch galvanized roofing nail and we're going to go every other hole. I like to start here by checking for plumb, making sure my opening is plumb. And I like to start at my center location. First putting my fastener in there, and then going and alternately going from side or top, every other hole, to the bottom. What I'm doing is going every other hole, and I'm alternating center, back, there. I'm going to keep working my way. And again, give me the whole justification of having that of a fastener every other hole. The more I start at the center and the better I follow suit with this every other hole, it makes my runs a lot straighter, a lot longer. Once I've done this jam, 
which I, as you can tell, I'm at every other hole location. So next what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to finish flashing the unit. Um, of course, so with the unit we have four vulnerable areas called corners. What I'm going to use today is a corner gasket that's supplied by a manufacturer. Um, in the corner here today, up here, I'm going to go ahead and flip this up, make sure that I have a little bit of sealant in there, push it down, make sure it squeezes out, and then I'm going to apply my gasket. I'm going to start out with this upper corner, and I'm going to apply it by putting it in front of the flange, on the flange edge, and then rotating it onto the unit. Again, applying it into the sealant that's maybe squeezed out in the corner, making sure that everything's applicable there making sure you had good adhesion and you're covering that up quite nicely. Once we have the corners on, we're going to talk about another opportunity. That is to take a piece of Tyvek and apply what we call a high pressure skirt. We don't make it mandatory, it's, a, it's an option. And for high pressure areas, such as lake fronts or wide open areas, this one here, we take a piece of Tyvek, 12 inches in width, and three or six inches greater than width of the frame of the window, and then applying a piece of flashing tape, allowing for only about half to three quarters of an inch to be shown. That's going to apply right directly to my nailing flange at the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it so that I have three inches on both sides, apply it to the nailing flange, and then as I apply that there, it's going to look nice here. As you'll notice that that is not sealing off my bottom nailing flange. What it does is it directly allows air to flow down and acts as a second drainage plane. So the next thing we're going to look at doing is applying our side flash. Today I've pre-cut the side flash. This is a flashing tape. Flashing tape that I'm using is 4 inch. I like to start about 1 inch above my nailing flange. Use my frame as my guide. and remove the backer to this product as I move down. That way by the time I get down to the end, I can fold it and dispose of it quite easily. So I'm using my frame as my guide, going out here as an angle method, following that frame, and then when I'm done, I'll be lapped up onto my frame by about a quarter of an inch. And again, lightly touching against the frame, and as I come down, I've come up even with my flash on my bottom skirt. Next, what I like to do, that I have this outside edge laid out, is take that flashing tape, pull it back, take my speed square, and rotate my speed square into my frame, allowing for that lap to go up onto the frame of the unit. When I'm, once I'm done there, I take the heel of it, that is the speed square, bring it down, and then I follow back up with my finger to lap up onto the frame and make a good contact. The next step would be to go out there with a knife at the corner and make a roofer's cut. Take your knife, go into the corner, cut at an angle and up, and lap it onto your frame and back onto your window. The bottom, again, going into the corner, cutting at an angle, and that helps like with a roofer's condition where water follows an edge, it's diverted away from the window rather than to the window. Being that this is such a small window, I can do this in one run. I can reach that far and it makes it kind of nice to place it, hold it tight, use your frame line everything up, get it into place, get that upper angle on there, pull it back, grab the speed square, roll it down and in. What I've done there is a really nice job about that flange is non-integral, so what we're doing is actually enhancing that air seal around the perimeter of that window. Next thing I'm going to do is I can grab my knife again. I'm going to go into the corner and then cut out at an angle. Again, that ripper's cut. You'll notice how the water comes this way and the water is diverted that way based on following an edge. This side here, we're going to do the same thing. The angle and around. 
What I'm going to do is make sure I apply pressure, make sure that is all adhered into place. There should be no shadow lines or anything. As far as this particular method, that's a really nice textbook methodology. The last thing we're going to do today is going to go up there and pull this flap down. As I pull that flap down, any excess paper that may come up here, you want to trim it so it's about a half inch up above that frame. One thing I'm going to do uh, just with this one here is I'm going to grab a couple of pieces of tape to hold it down into place. I have a two inch piece that I'm going to use right here to hold it into place. And I'm going to do discontinuous or skip taping. And what I'm looking to do here, I'm going to go to this end as well, hold that down right at that corner. I'm going to go over to the other corner and do the same thing. A piece maybe four to five inches long, taping that. And now my next is to tape my diagonal. Cut a piece about anywhere between six to ten inches from your corner up. Follow that cut that you made at that diagonal and tape that down. Um, very important that that rule is being followed for the pure sake of warranty. And again, application of that tape is still pressure sensitive and very unique. There you go, a Marvin Windows textbook install.